Good morning. Welcome back to the Old Shed Workshop. I'm Mike. If this is your first time here, I'll invite you to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Today, I'm going to begin the process of making a cribbage board, and I'm using the Rockla three-person track cribbage templates. I've used these Rockla templates before to make two track cribbage boards, and they're excellent. So I thought I'd walk you through the process this time making a three-person cribbage board. So let me show you the woods that I've selected for this project. These are the woods that I've chosen for this project. And this is the uh, Rockla three-player templates. And this is the directions. We'll get to that after we get this glued up and back out of the clamps. This is canary wood. This is red hot. And this is maple. The rough measurements for this, the directions say, has to be at least five and a half inches wide. I got almost six and a half here. I'll center the templates on this, and then I can trim later if I want to trim it in. I'm ready to start gluing up now, so I'll share with you my process. I only use Type Bond products. I use Type Bond 2. For most things, I use Type Bond Ultimate 3 for anything that's going to be uh, around water, whether it be beer flights or charcuterie boards or cutting boards. Anything that's going to be subjected to water is Type Bond Ultimate 3. I use uh, an acid brush to put the glue on. You never have too much glue. Yes, I glue both pieces. It's just the way I started it and i've always done it that way ever since can never have too much glue this is my process these acid brushes are very inexpensive if you care to you can rinse them out with water and reuse them or if you find they're inexpensive enough you just throw them away when you're done this is the process that i use something smaller than this i always use my finger it's the best way to get nice coverage on small items. So for these, lay that glue in real good. I've never had anything I've made come apart. So I'll finish gluing this up, and then we'll go over to planing that base that I've already taken out of the clamps. All right, I've got all the pieces glued and clamped up in the clamps. One thing I wanted to share, when I use the bar clamps, Sometimes if you start on the end, as you squeeze, the wood wants to start to travel because of the viscosity of the glue. I put a little light pressure on in the center first to try to get everything held together. And then I take a little piece of scrap wood and I tap it with a hammer to make sure that I get all the pieces flat against the pieces of black pipe because you don't want to get a cup in the uh, workpiece, then you're planing forever and you lose a lot of material out of your workpiece. I'm going to take off some of the excess glue now while I have the opportunity and make sure the clamps are tight and I'll move on to planing the base. I'm ready to start planing the base. Is the base all plain. Now it's time for some sanding and some layout. I'm ready to take the top portion, which will be the playing surface of the cribbage board, out of the clamps. So let's get that done. There it is. Ready to go to the planer. I have the playing surface piece, the top portion of the cribbage board, out of the planer. And I just touched it up with a quick sanding of 150. 
Now, I'm just going to square up this edge on my cross-cut sled so I have a nice square edge to start with laying out the templates. All right, let's check the height of the saw blade. I'll turn on my dust collection system and square up this end. Now on to setting up the templates. I've watched several videos on YouTube showing how guys try to prevent tear out drilling the holes. Some guys use blue painter's tape. Uh, I've tried that. I find the painter's tape to be too sticky and it clogs up the drill too quickly. What I've done and had good success with is just use packing tape. I put the packing tape on the top and what this does it allows you to see the holes, and as the drill comes down, the drill will cut the tape first. And the idea behind it is that if it's cutting the tape, it's not tearing out that first little bite of wood. have to bear in mind that the different woods respond differently to the drill, just like sanding. Some sand really easy, some takes a lot of work. So... I've done this on a few boards already. It works fine. It's no substitute for sanding. It's still going to have to sand once you have all your holes drilled. What I've done is I've taken the uh, drill bit that comes with the kit out and I've put in a Brad Point bit. These are 1 8 inch bits that I bought on Amazon. I'll put a link below for that. I'll just make a recommendation to you that before you take this apart, before you loosen that Allen set screw, take a picture of this because you're going to end up with pieces all over the workbench. Don't ask me how I know that. Just believe me. So take a picture. You get everything put back in the proper orientation. So now I'm going to set up the first template this is the way I do it. I have a square. I get the template positioned about where I want it to the edge of my workpiece. And then I want to make sure I have the same distance on each side. That's a little over 11 millimeters. And I find it much easier to measure in millimeters than it is in imperial measure. So that's 11. And that's 11. Give it a good eyeball. Get it where you want it now. Because once you start drilling, it's too late. Okay, so I make sure I'm square, the edge of the board to the template. And then I take a clamp. A lot of videos, even the video from Rockler, shows somebody holding the template in place to drill the first holes. I don't trust that, so I have it right where I need it. When I redesigned the top of this workbench, I cut a, a dado in a 2x4. So now when I clamp up to the front of my bench, I'm clamping right to a 2x4. The directions say to drill these two holes and these two holes first. These are the indexing holes, and that's where you're going to put your indexing pegs as you move forward. So let's start that. So what I've tried is a few different things. I've tried to start the drill slow just to make that first cut into the wood uh, through the tape. Uh, I've tried it doing it uh, with the drill at a, a higher speed and I've found that uh, it, it all depends on the type of wood. The wood Different woods take the drill bit differently. That's the bottom line. So with the clear packing tape, you, it gives you a good opportunity to see what you're doing. So let me start the first few. After I get them started, and I can see that the hole has a nice clean edge. What I do is I bring the drill up to full speed before I plunge it down. And depending on the wood, 
you're going to do a lot of cleaning out. Now you set your indexing pins in the indexing holes. Okay. I'm going to drill some of these holes and then start filming again when I move the template. I have the first set of holes done. And uh, I keep my blower from my compressor handy because you want to keep blowing out those holes. You don't want material over the top of a hole you're about to drill and have it affect the depth of your cut. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to mention. Uh, these drill bits, I had to take a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and cut a little bit off the length of the bit to fit in this adapter. I'm going to turn this and hopefully you can get a good look at it. Let's see. That's good. To move the template up to the second position now, you're going to take the last hole in this row. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. These sets of holes. The last one, you're going to go over that indexing hole that was left where the indexing pins were. So bring it up, put the indexing pins in. Same process now. You're gonna drill the indexing holes and the one in front of it. Then you can change the position of the indexing pins back to the indexing holes and finish doing all the other holes. And you just keep leapfrogging this to the end of the board. Let's get going drilling some more holes. And I do like to keep a clamp on it, even though it's really not technically necessary. The last thing you wanna do is have that board move, that template move, I should say. So let's do a few holes together. Remember, I start out just kinda breaking the surface. Then I go full speed on the drill speed and then Press forward on the drill bit. So I move the pins and then I continue with the same procedure. I'm going to move the pins and the template down for the next series of holes. Now, I don't want to bore you with just drilling holes, but I want to show you the progress. So now we have two sets and we're going to do six of these you're going to move the fifth hole in this series of three lines to the indexing hole put the indexing pins there do new indexing holes and the hole in front of it that's to have clearance for the drill so now I'll move those, I'll drill the next series of holes, and then I'll move again. Here's a little recommendation before I continue drilling. There's a part of the template where you make the curve. Those holes you drill on the first pass, because that's where you make the turn. I put a mark here so I know when I'm drilling my five-hole series, I don't accidentally drill one of these holes. Okay, so it's on this, uh, this series and this series. You don't want to accidentally drill into the turn. All right, that's the last series of holes using the first template. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh row is in the curved top of the second template. This works the same way. You're going to take the indexing pins and go into the fifth hole, the last hole in your five series of the outside series of holes, if that made sense. You're going to go to the outside hole with your indexing pins. And again, I'm going to put the clamp on it, and I'll, I'll do as many holes as I can before going back to move the indexing pins. This will be the last of it. So I'll get these drilled and then show you how it looks when these are completed. I've drilled the last of the holes. You can see that I had to move the indexing pins around and the, the clamp around to be able to hold that template in place to finish up. 
that's it. All the holes are drilled. So the next thing is I'm going to take off the tape and then we can do some sanding. The tape may rip because when it gets to the holes, sometimes it'll rip. I'll take a few minutes to get this done and we'll move on to the next step. I finished getting all the tape off of the, uh, the playing surface. It takes some time. You got to take a razor blade and get under it very carefully. You don't want to be digging into the wood. This is the top piece, the playing piece. This is the base. I showed the uh, planing procedure when I did the base, so I didn't need to show it again doing the top. Now what I want to do, get an idea, my size. This is going to be nice. The next process is I want to round off the top. Let me, let me put the base out of the way. In order to find the center and draw my arc, instead of putting more pencil lines, this has to all be sanded. The holes came out very, very well. Very happy with it. I, I meant to mention also that I have that, uh, that drill bit set a little deeper than uh, the set of the drill bit that comes with the kit. That gives me a little bit more depth because I know I'm going to end up having to do some sanding afterwards. And I don't want to lose depth of the holes because you want the pegs to stand straight. Just another little tidbit. So what I'm going to do is about in the middle somewhere, I'm going to put just blue painter's tape. And then in order to find the center, this is the process I use. This is about six and uh, seven sixteenths. No, five sixteenths. It's hard to try to find the center with numbers like that. So what I do is put the edge of your scale right on the edge. Hold it with your finger. Come down to something that's easily divisible by two. So in this, in this case, I have seven. So if I make a mark right at three and a half, I'm at the center. This is really handy for pieces of wood that uh, aren't, uh, don't have even sides, I should say. It doesn't matter what the number is. I could use eight. I could use nine. I could use 10. But seven, seven is about the shortest distance. So again, three and a half. Right there. And this scale isn't long enough. So we get the longer scale out. You may have seen me do this before. I put the pencil on my mark. And I bring the scale to the pencil. That way you're right on the line. So now I've got a center mark. And I want to figure out my arc from here. Now this is just trial and error because you want to get to both sides of the edge of the board. Your main workpiece is right there. That worked out pretty well. So I'll strike my arc. That one's too, too high. So I got to come back. So I come back a little bit. I want to go leave as much material as I can and just feel it out. Feel where you need to be. Here's that side. Here's this side. All right. Strike an arc. Okay. So I've got my arc. I know that I can cut on the bandsaw. I have my two-stage dust collection system all set up. I have my bandsaw set up, ready to go. I'm ready to make the cut. I'll put a link up above to my video that I did on my two-stage dust collection system. This is a small shop, so I have to move things around uh, to get to the next uh, piece in the process. So I've just sanded the top of this using 100. Now I'm going to begin sanding the finished piece, and I'm going to go right to 150. And then I'll go to 180, and I finish off with 220. 
I have the base on the bench now rounded over the same way I had done the top. I'm just checking for the overall fit for the finished product here. With a piece of blue tape, I've made a mark where the neodymium magnets are going to be, where I'm going to bore the hole for the pegs, and then where I'm going to try to determine where I want to create the pocket for the deck of playing cards. I use the same process to find the center of the workpiece, places where I'm going to drill holes. Now I'm going to set up my jig that I made to create the pocket for the playing cards. This jig has a center line and I line up the center line of the jig with the center line I've created on the workpiece. I'm determining the position of where I want to set the jig. Once I have the jig in place, I'll scribe exactly where the position is going to be with a pencil. Once I have that outline, I'm going to make a mark where I want to bore the hole with a forcing a bit for the finger cutout that enables you to put your finger in and pull up the deck of cards. Just so you understand the process here, I want to drill this hole or bore this hole before I put the jig on. And then I'm going to use a router bit with a bushing. And this is my jig to follow the router bit with the bushing. And you want to have this hole drilled first because once you've cut this with the router bit and begun to take all this material out, you can't really make a good hole with a Forstner bit because if the Forstner bit doesn't have enough meat to grab onto, it'll skate. I'm going to set up my router with the uh, guide bushing and then... I'll set up the jig and show you how I get started to clean out this material for the deck of cards. I have my router all set up with the guide bushing installed and the router bit installed. I'm going to advance the router bit just a, a small amount and start with the router bit advanced just slightly. I'm going to use the finger hole as a start point to insert the tip of the router bit and make my first pass. Right, that's my first pass. Always make sure you let the router stop completely before you move it so you don't do any damage to your workpiece. We'll clean it up a little bit. You're going to have to vacuum after each pass because the material will get clogged up in the slot you've just cut with the router. After my first pass, I take a measurement before I start taking the material out for the playing card. What I'll do is continue to advance the router bit until I get to my final depth making successive cuts. Having taken a measurement, I know I've achieved the final depth with the router cuts. Now I'm going to head over to the drill press after removing the jig, and then I'll hog out the material for the card pockets. Now the process is just hogging out the material with a Forstner bit. Unfortunately, my dust collection system won't fit during this process because of the width of the workpiece. So I'm gonna have to clean the drill press table off after each pass. I have the hole board for the pegs. And I have the two holes board for the magnets, the rare earth magnets that'll go in here. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to the router table and just take this edge off with a chamfering bit. I have my router table all set up. My two-stage dust collection system is set up. I'll put a link up above to the uh, router table fence 
with uh, integral exhaust for dust collection system. I just made it so that I can connect it to my table saw fence with a couple of fence clamps. Put some links to that and I'll put the link to this video up above. I have my chamfering bit set up. I just want to be able to knock off this edge a little bit. When I'm doing end grain like this, I always want to have a sacrificial piece that I can put up against my work piece just so I don't get any tear out. I'm just gonna cut these chamfers. I'm ready to insert the washers in the top part of the playing surface. I've taken a piece of blue painter's tape, put it on a piece of scrap wood, and drilled through it with this Forstner bit. That way, I don't get super glue or anything else on the playing surface. Put the accelerator on and just drop the washer in. And I can peel this up. Hopefully. And put it on this one. That easy. Super glue and then activator. Just drop it in. Done. These are the neodymium magnets or rare earth magnets that I put in the base of the board just tap them in so they're flush and then i'll drill make sure you drill a hole because these hardwoods the last thing you want to do is try to put the screw in and it'll snap the head right off the screw don't go real tight with this screw all you have to do is bring it down to to where it's flush same thing with the other one. Drop the magnet in, 
These happen to be five eighths of an inch. Drill a hole. Always better to pre-drill, especially with real small screws. Okay, everything's nice and flush. Now the only thing left to do is insert the felt where the playing cards go and just tuck that right in against the edges. That's it, done. Here's the finished product. I appreciate you all staying with me throughout the entire project. I would ask you that if you want to make a decision to buy any of the things I've used in this video that I've put links to down below, I'd encourage you to use my link. As an Amazon affiliate, I do get a small commission if people use my link. Here is the bottom. The pegs go here. And here's the top they made up with the neodymium magnets and just like that that's it that's the finished product thanks for watching see you on the next one